All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Author Spotlight. I'm your host, Leah Swander, and today we have a very special guest. Her name is Barbara Lally, and she has a book called The Trickster Diaries. So today we're going to hear all about Barbara's story and more about her book. So thank you so much for being on the podcast, Barbara. We're so excited to have you. Um, tell us more about The Trickster Diaries and how the story developed and, and really what it's about. Okay. Um, so when I was 10, I developed a disorder called trichotillomania. It's the hair pulling disorder. And it's under this umbrella category of body focused repetitive behaviors. So other body focused repetitive behaviors are things like nail biting and, and cheek biting and, you know, picking the lip from your skin. Um, and I suffer from trichotillomania. So I pull my hair out. I have really no control over it. I have this uncontrollable urge to remove my body hair. So when I was 10, I started with my eyebrows and that quickly went out of control, had no eyebrows at all. And then I went to my eyelashes because I didn't have any, any eyebrows anymore. So I went to my eyelashes um, in about sixth grade. They were gone. Then I went to my hair. I started here and it's been a journey of you know, so trying to accept myself and this disorder that I can't seem to control and I definitely can't change. So trichotillomania is chronic, so I'll have it for my whole life. I just turned 30 recently, so I've had it for 20 years. Um, and when I was 28, I was about to fall asleep and I had this idea in my head of what if I wrote a book about all of these memories I had in regards to trichotillomania, because I never really told anyone. You know, I told my family, of course, um, because you could see it and people knew it was happening, but I never really felt comfortable sharing with other people. It was something I I hid, like this dirty little secret. You know, I didn't want anyone to know. I was so ashamed and embarrassed. And of course I never met anyone with it. So I was like this only I thought I was the only one in the world at the time. So when I was 28, I thought, what if I share these stories? Because you know, some of them are pretty funny. You know, I find some humor in them and some of them are serious. Um and I and I told my friends about it and they were like, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to. And I was like, okay, but I'm scared though. So we started small, you know, I started on Instagram. I made an anonymous account called the Trickster Diaries. So um, I would post, I didn't post any pictures of myself. I didn't even use my name at all. I remember the first time I used my like first initial, like B and I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna know it's me. You know, I was so scared. Um, and over the course of, you know, these past few years, I have really um, been able to connect with other people with trichotillomania and our experiences are so similar. You know, I had so many reactions to my stories like, oh my God, I, I did the same thing or I felt the same way. I shared this memory with you. Um, and so when I decided to make the Trickster Diaries book, um, it's, you know, a combination of short stories from when I'm little, you know, all the way until, you know, I, I have that self-acceptance and I'm loving myself no matter what, no matter what I look like. Um, I have poems in there. I have some pictures in there. And I'm happy that I actually have photos because, you know, when it was going on, I'm, you know, you know, throw those photos away. I don't want to, you know, be reminded of this. But now I have them so I can I can show people. But so that's what my book's about. It's about my journey um, to self-acceptance and self-love with a disorder that physically alters my appearance. Yeah, I love that. I love it. At 28, we're like, I want to share this. And it just was like an idea, like out of the blue. That's really inspiring. Um, I'm, so the trickster diary. So is, do you call the disorder like trick for short? Is that why it's called trickster yes. diary? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, sorry. Totally you sorry. I'm a trickster. Yeah. Yeah. I would be like a trickster. Like we call like people in the trick, you know, trickster community. We say we're tricksters. And, and so that's like that. That's our word for it. Okay. Cool. Um, so you got this idea in the middle of the night of like writing this book. Um, what was like your first step into actually doing this? And, you know, what made you believe that you could, right? It was just an idea that came to you out of the blue. So take us through that journey. You know, what was the first step that you did and what made you really believe that you could publish this book? Okay. So the, yeah, the first, very first thing I did was start that Instagram account and I just typed, I remember typing all these little stories and these memories and sharing them and kind of seeing what the response is. Um, and I had a lot of positive feedback. So I kept wanting to share more because people could relate to me. And I was like, wow, that's a good feeling. I really never felt that my whole life. So this is just something I, that's like feeding my passion. And then once I collected 
I just had like a Google Doc of just all different stories that I would I would you know post here and there, and then I started to realize, okay, I need to start um, you know formatting this book and seeing what stories work where and where do I want to put a poem. And so I bought this huge whiteboard and I just like sectioned it off, and poems were in green, and you know main stories were in black, and all these different um, like ways to lay it out. And then I just you know started putting things together, reading it over and over, and I think as I was sharing with my friends and family, of course, and, and I have some other author friends, um, you know, getting their feedback to it, it helped me, you know, build the confidence because I, like I said, for 18 years of my life, I never spoke about this. I didn't even want to. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm, you know, in the spotlight, this is something I suffer from, here I am. And so I was really nervous about that. But like I said, getting the positive feedback from, um, the trickster community was fantastic. That really helped me. And then, you know, uh, you know, the love and support from the people closest to me too. Yeah. I love that. This community, right? You know, I'd never met anyone with this disorder and just putting yourself out there and accepting it, you know, um, not trying to hide in the shame. It brought you this community and I adore that. So I, so that's you for, you know, sharing your story. Um, I would love to read your stories in, in your book, um, The Trips Carries. And I love that, you know, it it doesn't seem, I don't know, like if I were to pick up The Trickster Diaries and I'm, I would learn about something new that I, you know, I doesn't necessarily relate to me, but I would love to, you know, hear that story. So kudos to you for sharing it. Um, so you said you've got a white book. And you yes. are, so was that kind of? how you felt most productive because a lot of times we talk to authors and they're like, you know, they're in a rut or they just don't, they don't know where to start. So what was that like your, you know, bread and butter of kind of persevering and, and getting everything organized or did you have another trick, um, trick up your sleeve uh, <laughs> um, that made, that made you more productive when writing the book? Yeah, so my my job full time was a teacher, and so I didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to this book. And so whenever I was like, you know, on a break for from school or even on the weekends, like I'm sitting there, I'm typing for like eight hours, like I'm getting it out there. I had to focus, otherwise I I wouldn't be able to. Um, and so yes, the whiteboard was super helpful because I kind of could fill in those gaps of like what needs to go here. Does this flow correctly? Um, but knowing that, you know, I have to make time for this really clicks in because once I'm done school and, you know, my responsibilities are done with my job. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to really focus on like my dream now and we're right. On that. Are you still a teacher? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's wow. so exciting. What grade do you teach? Third grade. I love it. Oh, you have, you have a lot of patience. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's a really good point. It's like, you know, you just have to put time in it. And once you have that clicked in your brain, it's like any break you can get, it's like, mm -hmm. write, write something down, like work towards it and it'll all come together. So that's a really good piece of advice. Um, you talked about, you know, find community of people that otherwise you wouldn't have found. And so that would be how published. Did I go out really quick? You're so good. Okay. My thing went black. So I don't know. Um, but how has publishing your book improved improved your life um, in any way, shape, or form? More than just finding a community. Oh wow. I oh, this is so hard to answer because I feel like so much of my life has improved. I think just my general um, idea of myself, like how I treat myself, how I feel about myself has improved. I didn't realize how many memories and emotions I suppressed as a child, not going through and like sharing these stories with people, you know, just ha you know, handling it myself. And so as I was writing the book and then publishing the book, I'm going through these emotions kind of for the first time because I'm able to like express how I really felt instead of just like, oh no, they noticed, what do I do? You know, so being able to go through things and like cry about it, that has definitely Helped. And also just realizing that, you know, if people know I have this disorder, they don't look at me any differently. They're like, oh, I know someone who does that. Or, oh, you know, my grandmother used to do it. They, you know, it opens the door to have these vulnerable conversations. And, you know, they people want to share with you. People might know somebody. 
Um, and yeah, it just, I think every aspect of my life really has, has improved because I'm not hiding behind anything anymore. Like I'm just myself fully and I'm, I'm helping others hopefully want to share their story too. Cause they see me do it and I'm like happy about it. And so maybe they're, you know, going to publish their own book about it and, and that'd be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And I think there's this there's there's this innate like therapy, therapeutic side to writing your book, even if you don't publish it. It's like you were saying, you know, really releasing all those emotions that you had suppressed and it's just figuring out, you know, who you are. There's so much power to writing your book and there's even another layer of power, you know, publishing it and um and just putting it out there for the world to see. So I Kudos to you because it is, that's like my favorite thing ever, especially like during that process, right? Like you, I think in your bio, you said self-acceptance is attainable and that is huge. And I think that, you know, even if someone like me read your book and it's like, like I don't necessarily relate to the tricks to diaries, right? But I can find that, you know, she's accepting herself and it's attainable and I can accept myself in other aspects of my life. So I adore that. Thank you. Um, so where can the audience, you know, find more about you? Where can we get your book? Um, I, I would also like to know, did you self-publish this book? I did. Yes, I self-published. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was that process for you? Did you, what, are you going to publish another one? You know, like, what was the experience like? So self-publishing was really great. I knew from early on that I wanted full control. I'm pretty, I, I like everything a certain way. You know, I, I'm pretty controlling. And this is like my like heart and soul. I knew I wanted full, you know, creative liberties. What, whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to do it myself. Um, and I have a friend, Douglas Pierce. He's an author as well. And he is self-published on Amazon. That's where my book is on Amazon. And he walked me through the steps and he, you know, let me, he led me to a wonderful formatter. Uh, Rebecca Poles, who I use, and you know, with them both, it was just a really wonderful, great process. It, everything was super easy. You know, it was just like I have this idea. Let's put it in Amazon. Amazon does a great job of just like upload this and then this and then this. Okay, click this, and and there it is. Um, and so yeah. I definitely, I I would suggest self publishing. You know, there's there's good and bad for you know traditional publishing and self publishing, but for me, you know, self publishing felt right. Still feels right. Um, and I'm, I'm happy I went through that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think that's, you know, good for the audience to, to hear of, you know, that you did self publish and you went through Amazon because I think a lot of people have so many ideas and they want to get started, but they're like, where do I even start? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just having even to listen to what you just said, you know, Amazon has a really good process and um, they're listening through self publish in 30 days, which, we're more of a hybrid approach, but either way, the story is powerful and everyone can become an author, which is like the coolest thing ever, right? Like, yeah. why not? Um, mm -hmm. Tell your story, and there's so much power to that. So they can find the Trickster Diaries on Amazon. Yes. Uh, I'd also be curious is your Instagram, the Trickster Diaries, still up and running? Oh, yes. Very much. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We love, I, you know, that's, I have an author account. I have author Barbara Lally, but the Trickster Diaries is like, you know, my baby. And I've um, definitely expanded on what the Trickster Diaries is. When I first started, it was, you know, me, anonymous. And I have, you know, I have these wreaths, you know, you, there's the wreath on my book. I just post wreaths. It's, you know, um, but now I have um other stories and different color wreaths because i'm like i like to be in black and white and so like the different stories are different color wreaths i have something called trick talks it's like an instagram live with other tricksters that's why i have my little like sign um oh, and right. <laughs> yeah so I, I bring other tricksters on instagram live i interview them and give them the opportunity to like share sometimes for the first time ever um and so it gives them that feeling that i felt you know that that happiness and that um complete you know this is me now Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, so the Trickster Diaries is still on, you know, it's still up and running, and it's it's you know, evolving, you know, every day. Yeah, I love that. And I'm gonna go follow it right after this. Yeah. So that's <laughs> um. So last but not least, I know this is a pretty short interview, but what is your parting piece of advice to the one person out there that desires to publish their book, but they're a little bit nervous to share their story? Um, you know, with the world, what's your piece of advice for them? 
Yeah, I think um, start small. No one says you have to be right there in your face. You know, this is my story. Do what feels right at the time. Like for me, anonymous at first took a long time. Now I'm, you know, here I'm talking about it. You know, do what feels right to you. But I know that once your story is out there, you're going to feel good about it. You know, everyone who I've spoken to, when they tell their story, they tell their truth. It is so freeing for you as a, as a person. Um, and so, you know, do what feels right, but do it, you know, make sure you do it because it's going to really change your life. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I love how you just kind of followed your intuition, right? Like that one night you had this idea when you're 28, you're like, maybe I should like share this and you followed through with it and look at where it's brought you. So kudos to you. I know I've said that quite a bit, but thank you so much for being on our show author spotlight. Make sure to follow the trickster diaries on Instagram. Um, go find Barbara's book on Amazon, the trickster diaries. One last question. Is there going to be another book from you? Yes. Oh yes. I, I will. I have a guided notebook, like a guided journal coming out this summer. So it's called like my trickster diary. So it has like prompts and, you know, little handwritten notes and poems and things so that someone who is nervous, maybe to share can still feel that, you know, that positive feeling of sharing, but just, you know, writing it down first. And maybe they want to later give that book to share with somebody. But so, yeah, that's my next thing. I think um, there will definitely be more books from me. Um, but yeah, that's my next one this summer, my trickster diaries. Wow. I love that. Oh my gosh. So yes, be on the lookout for that. Um, and go follow Barbara on all social media. Her, her bio and everything will be in the description below. So thank you so much for coming on the interview. It was so lovely to meet you and to hear more about the Trickster Diaries because that was something that I, I was like, how do you even say that word? I didn't know that was a thing. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I've actually known someone, you know, that's a trickster. And so it's just, you know, opening up that, that world of like, oh, you actually know someone that's, you know, connected through that way. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. This was an honor. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. That is this episode of Author Spotlight.